I got the best results cultivating springtails with grindle worms on different mediums. Very simple care with daily feeding. But daily feeding means living life without taking vacations. To free myself from feeding springtails and grindle worms daily, I start using wilted leaves. You can see well established cultures on wilted leaves with uh, live moss. Cultures of uh, springtails with grindle worms and wilted leaves stay alive without feeding for weeks. Wilted leaves turn out to be one of the best moisture retaining mediums. And the wilted leaves serve as food. Basically, the whole setup is a tiny composting bin. Very natural setup thinking about it. There are too many grindle worms in this culture. I have to collect grindle worms from this culture to prevent the culture from collapsing. And sure enough, I pick some springtails along with uh, grindle worms. Too many grindle worms on the walls is one sign to watch before culture collapses. It's like grindle worms spreading away in a spider web pattern away from the toxic medium. Bad odor is an even more certain indicator of imminent collapse of the culture. And this stands true for any medium I cultured uh, grindle worms on. So, anytime the culture smells bad or looks unhealthy, I take out as many worms as I can. You can see springtails on the water surface. Now let's add dry wilted leaves and that's all. This culture will keep going just fine. I feed grindle worms and springtails to my fish, guppies and antlers at least once a week. Fish love live food. Also, it is easy to make frozen grindle worms or dry pellets. Check my previous videos for details. Let's set up a new culture of grindle worms with springtails and wilted leaves. Poke needle sized uh, holes in the cover of the container for air circulation. Put some dry wilted leaves in the container. You can crush the large dry leaves on small pieces. I actually prefer to use larger pieces of leaves or small enough leaves that fit in the container. Add dechlorinated water. Cover the container and let it sit for a day or two. We can split the well-established culture into two. It is the best way to make new cultures. In this example, I collect some grindle worms with springtails. That amount should be enough for seeding a new culture. The same amount is enough for one feeding of half a dozen fish or so. Seed the grindle worms with springtails in the prepared container with wilted leaves. It's ok to have some water on the bottom of the container at the beginning. Springtails and grindle worms like and need moisture more than food. Cover the container to reduce water evaporation. All is set and ready on February 25th, 2022. I checked on the culture three days later. The leaves are damp. All looks good. The next week on March 7th I add a wilted leaf. Also, I like to cover the medium with a piece of plastic. It's easier to collect worms and springtails from the plastic. And uh, let's add some water to keep the culture moist. One more week later on March 14th. I see some worms on the walls and some water on the bottom. All looks good. March 28th. It's been a month since I set up this culture on the wilted leaves. Springtails and grindle worms are alive without me feeding them for the whole month. Let's add a wilted leaf. In the nature, grindle worms feed on wilted leaves. I actually found grindle worms in the local park while picking wilted leaves for my azopods. And springtails also feed on detritus, preferably poop. 
That is the main reason to keep Springfields with Grindle Worms on leaves. Grindle Worms feeding on wilted leaves provide food poop for Springtails to feed on. And the wilted leaves provide surface for Springtails and Grindle Worms to breed on. April 4th. It takes 6-8 weeks for new babies to hatch. You can see some young Springtails here already. April 13th. As the culture keeps growing, we have to provide more food. And we want an easy way to collect Grindle worms. Let's add a cereal flake. Five days later, on April 18th, the cereal flake remains untouched. Ok, let's add more leaves, if that's what worms prefer. It took about two weeks for Grindle worms to gather around the cereal flake. Here you can see them on April 25th. And springtails are spread around everywhere else. I add a cereal flake 2-3 times a week for keeping Grindle worms on the surface. May 9th. I also tried feeding culture with different cereal, dry dog food, oatmeal and yeast. Feeding culture with Cheerios cereal works the best for me as it has no odor. May 16th. It's about a 4 months old well established culture. Let's harvest springtails by shaking them off of the plastic. And so it goes week after week. Simple care. Just add a leaf once a week. Springtails and grindle worms spread around on every layer. Add cereal flakes on the top for worms to gather on the surface before the day you want to collect them. Harvest grindle worms once a month for feeding your fish and to keep your culture from collapsing. I keep a couple dozen cultures of springtails with grindle worms in 16 oz containers. It allows me to feed live food to my fish every week all year round. And I've been taking weeks long vacations throughout the year without losing a single culture. Here you can see about one year old cultures in February 2023. All healthy and going strong. Nothing stinky in the healthy cultures. I keep more than two dozen cultures on a shelf with aquariums in my living room. You can see a lot of springtails and grindle worms on the top. And there are even more under the leaves. The leaves on the bottom have been composted. I'm sure every one of you growing plants knows very well what to do with compost. I may share with you more details about composting at home in future videos. Here's one example just to give you ideas. Yes, Grindle worms feed on banana peels too. The springtails seem not to like bananas that much. A year-long experiment convinced me that wilting leaves are the best medium for culturing springtails with grindle worms. Have fun! And a lot of springtails and worms! <laughs>